and standard deviation. Now, the idea of the mean is something that I think is very familiar to you, and commonly we call it the average. So what we're going to look at is how do we compare two sets of data, or perhaps even more sets of data. But, uh, for example, suppose you wanted to compare the average age of people in Canada with the average age of people in Mexico. Well, you can't look through 30 million numbers, get a book of 30 million numbers and a book of however many million in Mexico, 60 million or whatever, and try to compare them. So what we do is we try to get a numerical representation, and that's what we call the mean. So let me uh, just use an example here to try to make some sense of this. Let's say we had a set of data that looked like this. Four twos. And another set of data that looked like this. Maybe a zero, a two, a two, and a four. I wanted to compare these. Uh, the, here's how we calculate the average or the mean. Now the symbol for it that we commonly use is X with a little line over it. And um, what we do, each element in this set um, is called X1, X2, X3, X4. So we give them all um, little sub-numbers so that we can identify each of the elements. And what we do is we add all of these elements together. So if I was calculating the mean here, I would go 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2. Take that whole thing and then divide by however many elements there are in my set. And there are four elements in this set. Now, I would find that that is going to be 8 divided by 4. Not surprisingly, it's 2. And so that's how we calculate the mean. I could do the same thing for this set over here. Uh, do exactly the same thing. So we would go 0 plus 2 plus 2 plus 4. So here I've divide, or uh, rather, um, added the elements of this set together, the x1, x2, x3, x4, and dividing by the number of elements, 4, and once again I get 8 divided by 4 is 2. Now, um, this was uh, designed to get a mean that is the same because I want to talk about another thing today which is standard deviation, but I'll get to that in a moment. Let me just generalize this formula uh, that we use to develop the average or the mean. Um, suppose we had n elements in a set, and um, each of those elements, of course, looks something like this. Uh, we would have an x1 and an x2 and so on, all the way up to xn. So if I wanted to develop a very general formula for calculating um, x bar or the mean of this set of elements, it would look something like this. I'm going to use sigma notation. Sigma meaning sum. We're going to sum together these elements, and here's how I'll do that. My counter, which I'll just use an i, I want it to go from 1 to n, and the things I want to add together are x sub i. So this will go through x1 plus x2, plus x3, all the way up to xm. And then we want to take this whole thing and I want to divide it by n. So the way we write that is we just write 1 over n out in front. So that has the same effect as dividing by n. So that's our generalized formula for finding the mean. Okay, so that's kind of a snazzy little formula. Now, let's get back to this stuff here. Uh, these two sets look pretty much identical as far as their means are concerned. But when we look at the elements here, and of course I have small enough sets that we can really quickly look and glance and say, well, these elements were all the same. They're, they're not spread out. These elements, on the other hand, are, are a little bit more spread out. So what we would like now is we have the averages be nice to have some other number that tells us kind of how spread out the data is. Is it very spread out, or is it just a little bit spread out, or is it, like this set here, not spread out at all? 
Well, let me show you how we deal with that. And that's using something called the standard deviation. Now, the way the standard deviation is designed to work, and we can get rid of, I guess, all of this stuff here. The way the standard deviation is designed to work is we say, well, we know that the mean for either set here turned out to be 2. So um, to see how spread out it is, let's take this average and go through element by element and see just how far away each element is from the average. And the way to find a distance, it's uh, essentially finding the difference between each element and the mean. So we would take this element here and we'd go, well, that'll be a, a 2 minus the mean. And then we're going to take the next element, which is 2 minus the mean. And the next element is 2 minus the mean. And finally, the last element is 2 minus the mean. Now, what we're going to do is take all these distances. And uh, with this set, it's a little unusual because there, there really no spread at all. Uh, I think it'll be a better illustration when we go to this set of data where there is a little bit of spread. So maybe I'm going to do that one right underneath here so we can kind of compare them. The first element here is 0. So 0 minus 2. And then the next element is a 2. So 2 minus 2. Then another 2. And lastly, a 4. Now, if I took these distances, and this one illustrates it pretty well, if I left it like this, we would get a negative 2. And over here, we would get a distance or a difference of positive 2. And so they'd cancel each other out if I ended up adding up all these differences or distances together. They'd cancel with each other and give us the illusion that there's really no spread at all. So we get around that with a sneaky little trick. If we square these, we turn them positive. So that's what we do. So to uh, kind of offset any risk of negatives canceling with positives, we square each of these calculations. Same thing up here. And that guarantees that we're going to have positive numbers. In fact, we're going to have distances. Well, now you might say, okay, that's pretty good, but we worked out how many of these differences or distances. Well, four of them. And so what we want to do is, just like when we take an average, why don't we take this whole thing and divide by four? Because it's kind of like we've done four calculations. So if we divide by four, it's a little bit more of an average of the spreads. Okay, so do the same thing down here. And then there's one last little thing we do in our calculation of the deviation. And that is, since we went through and squared these distances, they became artificially large. Now, we did that to make them all positive. So what we do to kind of offset making them artificially large is we say, well, let's square root the whole thing. If we do that, it's kind of like offsetting all of the squaring that goes on. And so we do the same thing down here. And so this is how mathematicians have told us we can analyze the spread of a set of data. And so this one's kind of neat. You're going to get 0 plus 0 plus 0 plus 0. So you got 0 all over 4. And the square root of 0 is 0. Now, isn't that interesting? This set of data had no spread at all, and we get a result of zero. So this is the least amount of spread that a set of data can have. Okay, If there's absolutely no spread at all, then the standard deviation is zero. In this set over here, of course, there's a little bit of spread, and let's see what it works out to be. Uh, we're going to end up with the square root of, and we're going to have, uh, this is going to be a four, and 0, and 0, and then another 4. So we're going to have 8 divided by the 4 on the bottom, and so we get the square root of 2. 
So we get a, uh, a number, one point uh, something or other, and that tells us a little bit about, well, it's certainly a bigger number than zero, so this data was a little bit more spread out. Kind of the rule is, the bigger the deviation, the more spread out the data is. And so that's how standard deviation works. Now, uh, just as we developed a general formula for uh, the mean, we develop a general formula for standard deviation. Well, let me just show you what that's going to look like. Okay. okay, we can probably work with the space we got here. Okay, what did we do? Well, again, I'm going to take uh, sigma here and use my counter i going from 1 to n, okay, n elements in the set. And what is it I want to do? Well, I want to add together x sub i minus the mean, and I want to take that and square it. And I want to go through all the different elements and do this procedure and add all those things together. Then I want to take this whole mess and I want to divide by however many elements there were. So I want to do a kind of a 1 over n thing happening again. And then I want to take the whole thing and square root it. So there's our formula. Uh, sometimes what they'll do is they'll bring the 1 over n inside here, but it really makes no difference. That's how we uh, work out what the uh, standard deviation is. And here's the little symbol for it. Looks like that, so the Greek letter. And that represents standard deviation. So there we have it. We have the mean and the standard deviation. Um, now, that pretty much concludes the important stuff. But I thought it would be a good idea just to mention what uh, a couple of other um, statistical measurements are that are out there, just so you kind of know what they are. They're, they're not very good. They're not as good as the mean, but they do exist, and so you should know what, what they're all about. One of them is called the median. And the median is simply if you have a set of data and you put it in either ascending or descending order. Okay? So it has to be in order. then what you want to do is take the middle number or the middle element. If there happen to be two middle numbers, you just average them out. Okay? But it's really the median is a fancy way of saying the number in the middle. And there's one other statistical uh, measurement called the mode. And that's not a very good one at all, and it's simply the most frequent element. So if you have, for example, a couple of ones and a two and a three and a four and a five, the mode would be the one, because it's the one that shows up the most uh, common. So the most, uh, the most common number. Now, as I say, these aren't particularly useful to us, and we certainly, uh, beyond what I've just said today, that's probably the last time you'll see them. So, that's about all I want to do right now, talking about the mean and standard deviation, and um, we'll catch you later.